Crypto products and NFTs are unregulated and can be highly risky. There may be no regulatory recourse for any loss from such transactions. It's become very frequent that you hear that one or the other crypto exchange of the world is making Dubai as its base. So why and how is Dubai emerging as the crypto capital of the world is what we'll explore in today's episode of Coffee and Crypto. Very warm welcome. My name is Arun Singh and of course we will talk about the topic of today. But before that, we'll give you big stories of the week starting with the one emerging from our country where Union Minister of Finance, Minister of Finance, Nirmala Sita Raman, addressing a seminar during the spring meet of the International Monetary Fund said, amidst the pioneering fintech revolution, the biggest risk of cryptocurrency could be money laundering and its use for financing terror. Now again, this has scared a lot of crypto enthusiasts in the country. She also said, and I quote, I think regulation using technology is the only answer. Regulation using technology will have to be so adept that it has to be not behind the curve, but be sure that it is on the top of it. And that's not possible if any one country thinks that it can handle it. It has to be across the board, unquote. On the other hand, as per a PTI report, a top official from the International Monetary Fund pointed at mid-term structural issues for India, and these are regulating crypto assets along with digital currency, addressing the remaining regulatory concerns in the banking sector, and integrating with the global economy. Tobias Adrian, financial counselor and director of the Monetary and Capital Market Department, told PTI, overall, the IMF is looking at India in a very positive fashion. And I quote, I think there are many opportunities and growth there is a recovery, there's a lot of excitement around new gro growth opportunities, new developments, unquote. This is what he said on the sidelines of the annual spring meeting of the IMF and the World Bank. So a lot of chatter around cryptocurrency in the uh, country and also on the international level as well. Moving ahead, crime branch of Bengaluru has arrested four persons for their alleged involvement in running a helium crypto token, that's HNT, through a mobile application. It was a scam. The police informed that via this mobile application, 15 crore rupees was routed through 44 different bank accounts among other items. Tweeting about the incident, Commissioner of Police of Bengaluru City Kamal Pan said, Cryptocurrency Ponzi scheme busted. CCB Bangalore has arrested four persons for running and operating a crypto a token HNT, which is Helium Crypto Token, through a mobile app called ShareHash. The app promised high returns on investment and collected crores of rupees from gullible people. Now moving towards South, Southern star Arya has become the first the Tamil actor to enter the NFT space, rather one of the first Tamil actors to enter the space with NFTs ready for sale. Minal, a new NFT platform in Tamil Nadu is set to launch uh, 27 NFT art forms of the actor to woo his fans to buy. The first is a preview scheduled for later this month and again as I said, 27 NFT art forms of Arya will be up for sale. In the end, luxury design house Hermes is considering using the metaverse for communications, although they want to remain focused on craftsmanship. Executive Chairman Axel Dumas told shareholders, we are curious and interested about the metaverse as it can be a good communications tool. Coming back to what I said in the opening, why is Dubai becoming the crypto capital of the world? We shall explain and discuss this while I go to the coffee wall. Let's go. A big Indian-based crypto exchange recently moved its base to Dubai, triggering a conversation about crypto brain drain in India. That's a separate topic though. But cryptocurrency exchange Bybit also announced that it would be moving its headquarters from Singapore to Dubai. And previously, global crypto exchanges like FTX and Binance had received licenses to operate in Dubai. Here comes the big question. Why is Dubai becoming the crypto capital of the world? We'll tell you. So recently, Dubai Virtual Asset Regulation Law was introduced. Now, this was introduced to develop Dubai and the UAE as regional and global destinations for the crypto market players. This was its first law governing the virtual assets. 
Now, it also formed an independent regulator for cryptocurrency sector. This is something that a lot of crypto enthusiasts here in India are expecting to happen, which is regulation. So Dubai has regulated it and it is called this independent regulator, Dubai Virtual Assets Regulatory Authority. You can also call it VARA, which is V-A-R-A. Now, its main responsibilities include regulating the issuance of new crypto tokens, supervising and controlling the trading of virtual assets, ensuring that high standards of protections are in place, monitoring transactions, and there are several other tasks that it has. But to cut it short, it's regulated, it has a law, and then they have a motive to encourage global players to come to Dubai or UAE. So we'll discuss this with our guests, and we'll also talk about the brain drain. Let's get into our discussion. We have with us Om Malvia, he's president of Tezos India. A very warm welcome. On the other hand, we have Sacha Jolie, partner, DMD Advocates, tax lawyer. Mr. Ohm, uh, first question to you. With the new tax regime in the country and the you know latest UPI fiasco we have seen, do you think a crypto brain drain is near in the country? Yeah. Uh, I would say that uh, crypto brain drain um, is definitely happening. Uh, at what scale? That's the question. Right now, the scale is not that big. Uh, one thing we have to realize is smartest of all the people in this entire world are working in this space, right? right? And we have history, we have seen in the history when all the smart people work into one space, it brings, you know, a new wave of innovation. And while Indians are in some part leading that wave of innovation, but India is not. And, uh, you know, so I'm seeing that trend happening while just looking around uh, uh, founders, entrepreneurs around me. Uh, that due to lack of regulation, lack of un uh, lack of clarity around conducting your businesses, if you are doing it crypto, a lot of people are moving out of, outside of India. And you sound quite modest and humble when you say, you know, smartest of the people are doing it. But of course, I mean, I mean, I, I agree with you what you're saying that you know this in a way is encouraging the brain drain in the country and. Uh, uh, on the other hand, you know, regulation is also expected, but what that regulation will have, we'll have to see in the future only. Sachit, uh, the same question to you. You know, we have this new tax regime and then recently UPI regulation or regulatory also said that, you know, we are not aware of any cryptocurrency exchange using UPI. All of this is very discouraging. You think uh, having a tax regime on one hand and no, no regulation on the other is in a way encouraging the crypto brain drain? Yeah, uh, oh, I mean, absolutely. a lot of Yeah, Sachit, go ahead. Absolutely. I mean, I have uh, no doubt in my mind that if you add, if you have such a high taxation, and I would call it an uh, appropriated taxation regime, which, you know, discourages anybody investing in it, and then you have a regulator who's not willing to put his stand out uh, versus, you know, a Dubai, which has almost a nil as of now a nil tax system and it shown the inclination to have a regulatory system in place and put a regulator out there to talk to people hmm. i think if you compare the two the answer is obvious uh, and anywhere see dubai in terms of distance in terms of uh, your, as you call a plug and play policy hmm. is up there and running. So, you know, it, it just adds value to them. Uh, unfortunately, you know, our uh, policy makers do not seem to uh, take that into stride and move quickly. But uh, I, I, I can't, there, is, but, there are no two ways about it. Yeah, such a, a brain. such a since you're, you are a tax lawyer and of course, we've been talking about Dubai here as well. Uh, do you think, you know, already tax rules in place in Dubai also make a comfortable space for cryptocurrency? Would you would you say that? Or if you can give us an insight of what the taxation really is like in Dubai or probably that has paved a way for cryptocurrency uh, for global players? Correct. No, see, as of now, there is no, in that sense, income tax in Dubai, but they have proposed a, a tax into from starting from 2023. But that's a bare minimum 10 percent tax i don't think there is too much to worry about on, on that front as well and globally i think we are moving towards a regime where every country will levy a tax hmm. uh, we are moving towards a global consensus on what we call the pillar one and pillar two in uh, under the oecd regime 
that every country will now start levying some kind of tax you will not have tax havens in the future but a 10% tax rate or a 15% tax rate as the world is today saying is still doable if you allow expenses to be allowed if you like allow losses to be set off over here we have a 30% gross tax mm. uh, you know it's is it, it's like killing the business so i mean it, it it's not it's a no brainer today if if somebody asks me where would you set up your shop i'll say dubai because of uh, you can talk to the regulator the tax regime is friendly and it is predictable it is not unpredictable i think the business looks at predictability the business looks at please tell me what do i have to do please don't come back after i start the business and tell me that i had to do 10 things retrospectively those are not things which businesses want so i think that's where dubai is pretty much scoring over us uh, as of now okay uh, om om uh, coming back to you of course what we've uh, also explained in our explainer i'll ask the same question to get a different perspective from you of course explainer was about why is dubai emerging as a new hub for indian crypto players or crypto play- players across the globe what is your opinion on this why do you think that's happening especially for the indian crypto players yeah so i think uh, sachin shared with the thoughts about how you know in terms of tax and regulations how dubai has got everything sorted out but i think one of uh, other reasons to that is also uh, they got friendly regulation yes it's also uh, uh, geographically it's near to india it's easier to get in touch with india here your friends and family and ecosystem uh, they got lower taxes and there is also this network effect so the thing is we have seen some entrepreneurs from india moving to dubai and they have managed to uh build their business significantly mm. that in turn is encouraging a lot of entrepreneurs that you know if i move to dubai i can also uh get away with all of this lack of clarity of regulations problem while i can also focus on uh, scaling my business scaling my products for you know yeah but users. but does that make a difference for my audience or for my customers in india as a, as a crypto exchange it doesn't right no 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 i i don't think it does uh that that much yeah but do you fear that india will lose out on talent or opportunities uh for crypto enthusiasts if if this regime was to uh, i mean continue the 30% tax yeah. or or no regulation do you think india will lose out on talent oh yeah so i mean in in the the crypto industry uh, it's very uh, normal that these days a lot of payments your salaries and these things are made in stable coins right or they are paid in bitcoins or ethereum and that basically enables you know that you can work from anywhere for any company and while you, while you can also get paid uh, and you don't have to wait for 7 days for your payment to get reflected and second thing is uh, people who are who have recently started working in this space they have started to realize the potential of the industry right if i have started as a employee now i after one year i would want to start my own startup and when i go through that journey i would look into questions that you know what is what makes the most sense for me if i want to start a new innovative product if i want to build a new protocol a new blockchain or new defi product you know how would i bring the maximum amount of value for me as a business and for my users right and sure. that's where when you start looking into it dubai and this kind of uh, country seems more favorable but such it uh, can or should the existing framework be changed to stop this brain drain or probably bring a regulation in a way which doesn't harm the government of course we very recently we've heard uh, a finance minister again talking about the ill effects of cryptocurrency so i i really doubt i mean a regulation is around the corner we really doubt all of that but do you think can there be a change to the existing framework well uh, it will be difficult i think the government has to make up its mind to have any kind of broad policy uh, framework or a regulator i don't know unless they are clear in their mind i don't think anything will come out uh, i think one more aspect which uh, here deserves consideration is the the bunching of nfts with crypto assets i think it it's we all call it under the same roof i think there are completely two different regimes i think somebody needs to stand up and understand how these a uh, uh, maybe a bitcoin versus an nft works to bunch it all together and say everything is at 30% tax and everything can lead to money laundering i i, I don't think you know these are jargons we hear every day you know we've heard allegations of corruption within the cbi as well it's not that you sh- shut down a cbi you know you 
or we have corruption in the government you shut down the government you don't do that you find a way to work around it hmm. you find a solution to it you don't just shut it out so i think the idea should be to regulate yes make up your mind bring a policy be the pioneer don't have to wait for the other governments to do anything lead by example or or, or maybe in, and and such a lot of crypto enthusiasts you know also said that you know probably 30% doesn't pinch us much but it's also 1% tedious on every single transaction a lot of day traders have also opposed that move so maybe a little Absolutely. amendment on that front it's it's an irritant it's difficult to implement i mean it's in fact under the indian income tax law generally tedious provisions do not apply to individuals hmm but this is a peculiar provision which applies to almost everybody under the roof so sure. if your sure. income in a year is less than a particular threshold you are not subject to a tds provision like if you are a salaried person tds doesn't you don't have to do a tds when you buy a software or you buy you pay for services right a business yes right. will have to do but if you apply it across the board in the case of now virtual digital assets you know it creates irritant so sure. you basically no. are saying don't do this transaction got it got it right uh, thank you so very much that's all the time that we had for this and of course uh, sachit mentioned about you know agencies and i won't go that far but i would say that you know internet also has its own ill effects but of course you can't shut down internet then there has to be some middle ground there and that is what a lot of crypto enthusiasts have been asking but moving on to our next segment that is mcq which is my crypto queries and we'll be answering your question when i say we it's our expert now that uh, Rohas Nagpal he's author of the crypto playbook a book and he's also the chief blockchain architect for hifi blockchain welcome rohas first question is from mehul solanki he's asking about pi network and i get a lot of questions on my personal dms as well about pi network you know it is it, it's a platform where you can mine this currency on mobile phone it has created a lot of hype what do you think of this and the uh, the, the question here is what is the pi network's value in the market sure so i am personally not convinced with pi network at all because it does not have a use case so when you are going to mine a crypto there has to be a logic behind it why are we mining it because it is going to solve some problem and thereby over a period of time its usage will increase and the value will increase hmm. so when you look at bitcoin or so many other cryptocurrencies they have a real world use case and that is why you mine them you spend energy on them. but in the pi network there is no use case right it does not make sense that okay fine you are able to mine it using your phone mm. you are able to do it with very little energy consumption but what is the point of it ultimately by mining pi coins what are you creating what use case is there there is nothing so i would strongly recommend to people not to sure. waste their energy and time with that okay moving on to next question from akshit bhardwaj what's the sco- scope of blockchain for land records and voting a very interesting question very good question very good question so land record has been considered a use case for a long time but i don't think it makes any sense and i will tell you why a blockchain solution makes sense when there are multiple parties who do not trust each other they have to come together for a use case when we talk about land record there is only one party which is putting the records that is the government so when it is one single party which is the government creating the documents changing them putting blockchain into this scenario will not help at all in fact it will slow down the system because by nature every node will try to replicate every single land record so you end up having 50 copies of the same data huge costs in storage but it is not going to add any value whatsoever so i would not recommend blockchain for that okay. coming to voting while that is considered a good use case in a democratic country the privacy of your vote is critical nobody should come to know who i voted for hmm. now on the blockchain network i am going to have an address if i am going to vote what if somebody can see that and that destroys the whole fundamental logic behind democratic voting so right. again i don't think that is a good use case okay stay on with us as we quickly take a break but we'll be discussing physical bitcoin and we'll also have rohas answer questions about physical bitcoin as well you don't go anywhere keep watching ndtv as i take two sips of coffee in this break This is Coffee and Crypto and now we'll be talking about physical bitcoin what is a physical bitcoin let's get you the explainer but well, it's similar to the fiat currency how we have coins and notes in physical form 
that's how it exists. They're usually made from metals. Of course, it has the Bitcoin logo that you can't miss, but also its value is written on one side. But fiat currency has a numeric written on it. Physical Bitcoin has a private key printed on its back. This key usually holds a coin's actual value in a digital wallet. It could be one Bitcoin, five Bitcoin or 50 Bitcoin. They are more or less like ATM card. The card does not have any value, right? It's the magnetic strip on the front of the card or the certification on the voucher, which actually gives it the access uh, to the real currency. So that's what physical Bitcoin is. But we have some questions related to it that Rohas is going to answer. He's chief blockchain architect of HiFi blockchain. How are these physical Bitcoins created, Rohas? And you, I, I guess you also have one in your hand. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Yes, I do. So uh, these physical bitcoins are of two types. One is just this pure collectible. Mm -hmm. So it is a little heavy. So you can even use it as a paperweight. It has the logo and some nice looking design on it. Mm. So it will come for 100, 200 rupees. It has no value per se. But it all started with one gentleman in America who started printing the private key behind. So mm. when you look at cryptocurrencies to own it, you basically start a wallet. And a wallet has an address which you can share with the whole world, like mm. a bank account number. Mm. And anybody can send Bitcoin to that address. But more important is a private key. And every address has only one private key related to it. Mm. When I have that private key, I can transfer that Bitcoin to anybody else. So, you know, when you hear about people's Bitcoin getting hacked, what is actually happening? Someone is getting their private key. Thereby, they are able to replicate the digital signature of the person mm. and transfer all his Bitcoin. Money. Right. But who, who is creating these now? Uh, well, anybody can. Uh, even you and I can start doing it. What sure. we would do is we would put Bitcoin in a particular wallet address and then print the private key behind and the address in front. But do we do and we how, need these physical Bitcoins, Rohas? No, actually we don't. It's just a it fad is, probably. It's, it's, it's just a fad. It just feels cool so people use it. And you and I can start issuing. We don't need any permission. Right. It definitely looks cool. And that is why Rohas has got one to flash for us as well. But uh, although that's a souvenir, let's say, um, uh, I mean, it, it, as he said, it doesn't have any value. But thank you so very much for answering all our questions, Rohas. That's all that we had for physical Bitcoin and also this episode. But we'll be back next Friday. I don't think it's goodbye from my side. Crypto products and NFTs are unregulated and can be highly risky. There may be no regulatory recourse for any loss from such transactions.